Um, I'll talk very briefly about the sanctuary and just give you some information about the sanctuary and, and ask you guys how much you know about sanctuaries. And then I'm going to talk about kelp, urchins, wasting disease, heat waves. And then if you guys are willing, there's another section I added on this morning about what I'm actually doing down here. I was down here yesterday, going to be doing some work intertidally today and Sunday working this tide series. Um, related to endangered black abalone atmospheric river events and um, fire scars. Yes, we want to hear that. Yeah, yes, okay. we do. <laughs> so that, that will happen too. Okay, so, so, they never will. So, um, so the sanctuary program is a federal program. We're within NOAA, which is the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. Do any of you guys know any of the, the main offices, the line offices, Underneath Noah. I mean, <laughs> you guys do know one, yeah. Uh, I mean, there's the Office of National Marine Sanctuary. That's an office, yeah, that's for sure. And that's within what's called the Ocean Service. So there's the National Ocean Service. Is there another service you guys may have heard of? Weather service. The Weather Service. That's the one everybody knows. Mm -hmm. National Weather Service, okay? There's also the National Marine Fisheries Service. There's all, um, a whole office that's just about satellites that are doing basically environmental monitoring um, and a couple of others that, that, are, that are smaller. But it's really basically the weather service, the fisheries service, and the ocean service are the ones that people um, may know. Within the ocean service, we have the Office of National Marine Sanctuaries. And so here, this map shows you where the sanctuaries are, those are the circles. The triangles are um, marine national monuments, but we administer them. And, and then there's actually um, a couple, one proposed site. We actually added the Malas Bay Potomac River and the Wisconsin Shipwreck Coast. Those two were just added in the last two years. So with any marine protected area, it's place-based. So it's protecting some resources in an area. And for example, the Wisconsin Shipwreck Coast, it's in freshwater, and it's like a graveyard of ships. So it's a, it's a heritage and historic kind of sanctuary. Um, each sanctuary has its own kind of um, rules and regulations. Monterey Bay, which extends from north of San Francisco all the way to south of here in Cambria, and then these kind of weird little swings out into the ocean, in some cases up to 40 miles offshore, mm -hmm. and includes Davidson Seamount, which is an extinct volcano that um, was the first described seamount ever. And um, that was added um, about 15 years ago. So we cover a lot of area, over 6,000 square miles, almost 300 miles of shoreline, we go from the mean high tide water out in some cases almost down to 12,000 um, feet deep, over 12,000 feet deep. <laughs> and as you might imagine, the diversity is incredible because we have so many different organisms, organisms utilize the sanctuary. Birds, mammals, fishes, many phyla of invertebrates like we don't even know we're discovering things all the time that we didn't know lived in the sanctuary there's also like when we go to davidson seamount with the monterey bay aquarium research institute and they go down with an rov they're actually discovering new species that were unknown to science prior to those expeditions so it's a really cool very diverse um, place um, you can learn more about the sanctuary in sort of two ways. One is through our website, which I'll talk about in a second, but the other that most of you probably, because you're young, will be, <laughs> uh, will be on a phone or an iPad or a tablet or something like that. So check out C Photo, all one word, S-E-A Photo. It's free. It has all kinds of information on it. We're actually upgrading it right now. Um, the guy who um, developed the app is like, hey, let's do a refresher. So we're gonna have more species, more photos. And um, anyways, it's kind of a cool resource. Like if you're on the inner title and you kind of go, huh, I wonder what that 
that's, you know, where Sean says, that's a cormorant. And you're like, okay, <laughs> cormorant. And you're like, what's a cormorant? And you can look at it and go, oh, well, it could be a branch cormorant. It could be a double-crested cormorant. It could be a pelagic cormorant. We've got all those in there. You can check it out and figure out which one it is based on plumage, coloring, etc. So anyways, it's, it's like a little natural history field guide. And like I said, every couple of years, we add more information and kind of update it. So with great out. pictures, with awesome pictures. And then the other way is our website. So we have a governmental website, which has sort of the, what you might expect the government agency has. But we also have this website, which is a, is a .org. And it's done in partnership with academic institutions, NGOs, and other state um, agencies and federal agencies. And this really has sort of four main areas there are multiple sanctuaries that are included. So for you guys, the Channel Islands National Marine Sanctuary is most relevant in, in, from your home institution. But basically, we've got projects. So there's almost 200 projects that are in there, both that are ongoing and some that are already done. They're sort of historic. But they tell you the who, what, when, why, or why, and then links usually to where you can access more information or if there's papers, links to that. That tells you about the science that's taking place in the sanctuary. There's also the photo library, which has nearly 6,000 images in it. And that's everything, like the image that's on that screen grab I did, that's from the deep sea. Or it could be at, a, at Elkhorn Slough up in the Monterey Bay area or anywhere in between. Low tide, high tide, underwater, above water, all kinds of stuff. Submersibles, ROVs, they're all pictures depicting either the science that's occurring in the sanctuary or the organisms and resources that occur within the sanctuary. All the images are in the public domain, so people use our stuff all the time. It's, it's a crack up I run on Wikipedia or something like, God, that picture looks really familiar. And I'll go click on it, it's like, oh, it came from Simon. You know, it's one of the ones we uploaded. Um, so there's plenty of that. And then there's also the species database, which is more than sea photo. Sea photo is like a quick thumbnail guide to the organisms with a few key features. The species database is a more thorough, talks about how the organism reproduces, feeds, what feeds on it, it more distinctive uh, information about its distinguishing characters, etc. And then we've just recently added ecosystem trends. One of the things that government agencies have to do is we have to monitor our resources, and then we have to look at how they are or are not changing through time and in which way. So you have to know the status of a resource and then the trends associated with them. Now, if you do that in a report, it takes whatever, two to three years to get all the information to write the report. By the time you've written the report and it's gone through all the kind of review and everything, it's already outdated and not many people will look at it. So what they decided to do is, we're gonna webinize a lot of those pieces of information so that now there's just, instead of a plot or a figure that's in a publication, in a, in a report, it's on a website. And as new data come in, it gets updated. Which is great, right? You don't wanna look, you know, if you went to the doctor, like, hey, here's your medical information from last week. It's like, yeah, well, what's my heart rate right now? You got well, a stick sorry. in your foot. <laughs> We're going to have to wait a week when the report comes out. It's like, dude, I feel like I've got some heart palpitations right now. You know, it's like, come on. No, sorry, you got to wait for the report. So this is basically closer to real time for a lot of those key factors. So that's, that's, kind of, that's an in development. Then we have sort of just background information about all the different habitats that occur with a lot of these sanctuaries. And then one of the things we have is kind of the news which is like our sort of little version of cool stories about things that are happening in the sanctuary. So I recommend that you go to sanctuarysimon.org and check it out. It's a pretty cool resource. Okay, um, 